Hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario. Welcome to another episode here of Thrifty Gaming Pickups. I'm your host, Mr. Mario, and this is my dog, Lily, who is in every single episode of this. In case you do not know, Thrifty Gaming Pickups is a show that I do here on the second channel. I did say second channel, so if you want something that is, uh, I guess, more tutorial-based, uh, a lot better produced, edited, and everything. You might not see Lily as much, though. Feel free to check out my main channel. This channel is more for random videos and, of course, Thrifty Gaming Pickups, which is a series where I kind of just go through and show you all what I've picked up for cheap, what I've gotten good deals on, gaming-related and everything, and we just kind of have fun with that. So without further ado, let's go ahead, sit down, and get started with this episode. Looks like Lily is sniffing. All right, looks like we good. Looks like we good. All right, so... For anybody who might be noticing, the Tower of Xboxes, yes, we got a <laughs> we got a Tower of Xboxes here, and of course we have a Tower of Dog, and uh, several, several different Xbox games amongst many others. I think I did pretty good this time around. Almost all of these games were half off as well too, so I ended up going to a, th a few thrift stores over the past few weeks, and on top of that, I also went to a uh, vintage stock or uh, for other people depending on where your locale is at it might be movie trading company uh they're okay i'm not a big fan of them to be honest but uh sometimes they do have some stuff i like for you know a fair price so let's go ahead and kind of just start from uh left to right here lily sit sit there we go good dog actually you're gonna get a treat for that for being so good and sitting there you go so going through all this here First of all, uh, this is the small stack that I end up getting from, uh, I keep wanting to say movie trading company, but no, it was vintage stock. And this first one was strange, so I think the most I paid out of games here was $2. But just going through these, uh, I was going through their disc only and clearance section, and I ended up picking up, I thought this was strange, I saw Xbox Classics, and I was like, huh. I've never seen an Xbox Classics release, what is that? And then I saw this was PAL. And then I saw it was only 99 cents, so I end up getting a PAL copy, disc only, but still a PAL copy nonetheless of The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, which is a great game. And it was just interesting finding a PAL copy out in the wild, and we're gonna come revisit this too. But a dollar for this, you know, sure. I'll add it to the collection. Whenever I find an import out in the wild and it's a cheap price or a really good price like this, I try and pick it up. Plus, I can play this since it should be in English and, you know, my consoles are modified and everything, so we'll be good on that. Now, if you know me or you've been seeing this series, you might know that I really like collecting these demo discs if I can for really any system. And I was happy to see some of these OXM discs and specifically discs that I didn't even own. This is from official Xbox magazine and they used to bundle the original like the original run it used to come with a every issue came with almost every issue came with a original Xbox demo disc and I stopped subscribing at one point and then when the 360 came out they started having like dual format so on one disc it was Xbox and Xbox 360 compatible then they switched over to 360 and I don't know when they stopped but I believe they just stopped doing the demo discs and I don't know if they stopped the magazine I don't believe there's ever been an Xbox one demo disc but either way I never had this one here so this is of course advertising mainly Def Jam Icon and it is a um, what is it is a Xbox 360 demo disc which this is the first one I've had I never had any of the OXM Xbox 360 discs but it's issue 70 and it has you know several different titles here that you could see all around the rim of the disc this is the most expensive one by the way at two dollars got another one here issue 52 specifically advertising King Kong amongst many others. The cool thing with this was not only it had a bunch of demos, but it also had like a bunch of like video documentaries, behind the scenes stuff, trailers. Some of them had game saves. I don't know about the Xbox 360 ones, but I know the original ones had some cool game saves and stuff. So there was really awesome content on these, but you know, this for a dollar. Got another one here, issue 54 specific for xbox 360 well okay for call of duty 2 i meant to say this is one of those where it says plays on xbox 360 and original xbox i mean it's kind of covered but this one it looks like it plays on both formats i think this one as well too this would have to play on both i would say because this is issue 52 and issue 54 works on both so i feel like it'd have to be both of them 
Here's another one, issue 85 for Guitar Hero Aerosmith. I remember this coming out. And here, this disc is only playable on Xbox 360 for a dollar. And it looked like, I think in the last episode, I ended up getting a big stack of demos from there. And I think there was a couple that I missed out on because I was able to grab these here, but also for a dollar each. MX vs. ATV Untamed. I never played this one, but I always like to grab demos when I can, if they're a dollar or two. And SOCOM 2 US Navy SEALs. It looks like a GameStop exclusive variant. Isn't that right, Lily? Exactly. So yeah, that was it for my pickups from a actual game shop, which was Vintage Stock. Again, I'm not crazy about Vintage Stock, but if they have some cool things like this, I like to pick them up. And the cool thing about demo discs is I, I like collecting them. I like being able to get a hold of them, mess around, what have you, check the art, like the uh, the contents of them and such. And on top of that, I mean, they're kind of useless to most people and companies don't really know what to do with them. So they just kind of throw them in the bin for a dollar each. And there I am scooping them up if I can. So Lily. there you go. <laughs> Next up, we have a few other games here where the rest of this, we're now getting into the uh, thrift shop territory here. So first of all, I've never played this, but Magic the Gathering Battlegrounds. Now this was half off, thankfully. So this was a previous blockbuster rental, and as you can see, it used to be at either a GameStop or an EB Games at one point. Never played this, but it looked interesting. I briefly played Magic before, like the actual Magic the Gathering card game. I learned how to play it. Shout out to Charlie for teaching me, and just decided, you know, it's not really my thing, and on top of that, I don't need another thing to spend money on, so I kind of just sold off all my cards and cut my losses. Um, but this looked interesting, so I'll give it a shot. So $2 for this. Why not? Recently, in case you don't know, a uh, few of the LEGO games have been unlisted or delisted. So that means that you cannot buy a few LEGO games online anymore, like digital downloads anymore, unfortunately, because of licensing agreements, I'm sure. So I've been a little bit conscious of, the, conscious of that. And because of that, I kind of end up picking this up here, but LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean for $2 on 360. I believe the ones that you cannot buy digitally anymore are LEGO The Hobbit and LEGO Lord of the Rings, which disappointing because LEGO Lord of the Rings is pretty fun. But yeah, two bucks for this. And I'm starting to see, you know, Wii U games here and there, which is awesome. I think in the last episode, maybe even the episode before, we've done some Wii U stuff. Uh, but yeah, Resident Evil Revelations on Wii U for three bucks. Why not? Because it says six here, but you know, half off. And this also surprised me. I end up seeing from the same store some of these Game Boy Advance cartridge only games. Now, I'm not crazy about disc only, like right here, unless it's, you know, like a demo or something, or it's really cheap. Right, Lily? She's just sniffing everything. But for cartridge, I don't really mind too much, and especially at the prices. So here we end up getting Pokemon Pinball, Sonic Adventure 2, and Pokemon Ruby all on Game Boy Advance. Each of these was selling for $1.99, so two bucks each, which is excellent already in my opinion, and then half off, so I paid a dollar for each of these. So, you know, it's, I was personally shocked that they didn't see Pokemon on these and just said, oh, it says Pokemon, we need to sell each of these for $26, because normally that's what ends up happening at these stores where something like Sonic, they'll price that at a few dollars, but as soon as it says Mario or Pokemon on it, they spike that up to like 20 or 30 bucks. But no, each of these was $2 and half off, a dollar for each game. So a dollar for Game Boy Advance games, you cannot be beat on that. Even Lily thinks they're interesting. Thankfully she doesn't eat them, but there you go, Lily. You can sn She's liking that Resident Evil for some reason. So I end up grabbing some other games here as well. This is from a few weeks ago, and this is all in one shot here. But I end up getting uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, which I have never played, but decided to pick this up. And these were all half off as well too, so Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on Xbox, four bucks. Jade Empire Limited Edition. Now, this has two discs on here, which makes it the limited edition. This has the, of course, the game itself. And then here it has, let's see if it details anything. It just says the bonus content. And then on the back here, uh, let's see, it has the making of Jade Empire and demos for Forza, Conquer, and Mech Assault 2. So I've heard very good things about Jade Empire. I've still never played it to this day, but you know, now I have a complete in-box copy of the limited edition, which will be nice. And this is 450. So I thought that was fair. Blood Rain for 350. 
PsyOps, the MindGate Conspiracy for 450. Deus Ex, the Invisible War. Uh, oh, here it is. 350 on this. This is a previous rental, so. <laughs> Genma Onimusha or Genma Onimusha. I don't know how you say that, but uh, I did not play. I played this one back in the day, uh, but recently I actually ended up picking up and finishing Onimusha Warlords on the PS2, which, not PS2, on the Switch, which it was the remaster of the PS2 version. And MVG and I, Modern Vintage Gamer, in case you don't know, big shout out to him. We actually talked about this on my podcast, Mario's Minute, and we were discussing how much we liked it, and we were like, well, I think he was more saying, I don't know why they didn't remake Jinma or Genma on Amusha. For whatever reason, they just use Warlords, but it's still really cool that they ended up uh, remastering it, just because it's it's great on Switch. It's also on PS4, Xbox One, and I believe PC. But yeah, I really enjoy the Switch port. But we got this one, the first... This is almost like a director's cut of it, because I think, let's see what else it has. Um, yeah, new enhanced Xbox version of Capcom's Classic. And I find it funny they use the word classic there to describe the game when it had only been out for a year at the time, because Onimusha Warlords came out in 2001, and this one came out in 2002, and they were already calling it a classic. New areas to explore, evolving enemies, enhanced action and modified difficulty level, new attack modes and stronger enemies, more than twice the gameplay of the original, dodge enemy attacks and fight your enemy in a tug of war to advance, uh, to absorb valuable green souls. Excuse me. So, yeah, even with that, now looking at the bonuses here, I really question why they didn't re-release re this version. Strange. Here we go. So, end up getting this, and this is in stellar shape, I noticed. Like, I was just shocked at how good these were. And look, it's even in, it, it's even complete, and has a two-month free trial of Xbox Live there, if you all remember those. But this has Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell, and Rainbow Six 3 all together for 350 Hitman 2, Silent Assassin for 350 Kingdom Under Fire, The Crusaders, great game here, for 450 Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the original one. Still need to actually go through this game here, and it is complete, thankfully, for five bucks. So I think this is the most expensive out of all these. And then the cheapest here was Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance for 250 So I think on this, really great Xbox stack here. Really great stack. Right, Lily? She can, she can kind of review it if she wants to. She gives it the sniffs of approval, it seems. And out of the games here, the last stack I have, this is from one more store I went to. And this one, unfortunately, they priced games a little bit higher than other shops, but they were having a half off sale as well too. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna buy it on here. And some of them were still a little bit expensive and you're gonna see, you know, when I was complaining about how Mario and Pokemon games spike up in price, you're gonna see some of that here. But then with the half off, I found it to be an acceptable price. So let's get into this here. Gran Turismo 2 for 250 here again because I end up uh, paying half off on this. And the nice thing is the reason why I was happy to, uh, well, reason why I picked this up and I was happy to grab it is because this one, the first PS1 games I ever picked up. I got Gran Turismo 2 and I got Driver 2. Those are the first PS1 games I ever purchased. And my copy of Gran Turismo 2 is not in the best shape. Like it ended up getting hit with liquid or something because the um, the instruction manual is all kind of glomped together. And this is years and years and years ago. And then of course, you know, the cover art is kind of messed up too. So I was happy to get a much nicer looking copy for 250. Why not? Terraria on the Xbox 360. This was, let's see, 250, and it was for yeah, 250. And it was funny because the guy I was talking to when he was checking me out, he even looked at this. He's like, "Wait, how much is this?" Because he thought it was $19. And I'm like, "No, no, no, it's not that much. You wrote the price right there." And then we start talking. He's like, "Oh, okay, man, that game was really expensive when it came out." And I said, "Yeah, you know, when it initially came out, it was like 20, 30 bucks on the 360." And then he started telling me that it's only 10 on PC, and he has it on there, and he loves it. And what he likes to do is he likes to buy like five or ten copies of it whenever it drops down to 75% off. So it's 250 each copy, and then he gifts them to his friends. So we kind of just had like a little side tangent about that. But yeah, 250 for Terraria on 360. Farming Simulator 2015. I was shocked that it was this much, and then I ended up paying seven bucks for this. And the reason why I did this is because 
I've noticed that the farming simulator games, they were, uh, when I tried to look for them on 360 before, at least kind of like in town, just kind of like, you know, looking through, uh, looking through racks and everything of games, sometimes they're a little hard to come by. I was kind of surprised. Also, maybe this will be a nice relaxing game. I don't know, but I think they released two of them. I think they did. Either way, I said seven bucks. Sure. For memes, let's grab that. <laughs> Shadow of the Colossus on PS2. I own this on PS3. I own the remake on PS4. I never ever owned the PS2 version until now. And for $5, I thought that it was quite acceptable. So you know what? It was nice to add this to the collection here. And it looked like it had, of course, gone through GameStop at one point, thankfully. Okay, cool. That sticker's on the back. Sometimes they put them on the art here. But yeah, nice to have the original Shadow of the Colossus here, thankfully. Chrome Hounds on the Xbox 360. Look at this. Look at this. This is actually one of the games where GameStop used to actually put stickers on the art itself. It's so bad that they would do that. But this has gone through several different prices. It was $15 at Blockbuster. But this has gone through several different prices because it was $15 at Blockbuster, and then $10 at EB Games or GameStop, and then $5 here, and then half off, I paid $250 for this. I remember this game, uh, at one point, it was kind of going up a little bit in popularity because it was announced that the online servers were going offline. I think it was one of the first big games on 360 that had its servers go offline, but um, that's about the only time I remember it having any notoriety. Cool. End up grabbing this because I did not have this dual collection here, but Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts and Viva Pinata for $3. I have Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I actually do not have Viva Pinata, so nice to get that in there. I've heard Viva Pinata's actually pretty good. <laughs> then here, the Wii games. These are the ones where they were putting Mario on here, and because of that, it was more expensive, but because of the, uh, the half-off sale, I felt like the prices were fair on them. So this was originally $21.00 but half off brought it to 1050 for Super Mario Galaxy 2 and all of these are in surprisingly really good shape and complete. I I've noticed with Wii games it's always kind of somewhere in between. You either have them in great shape or they're in horrible shape depending on what uh, like who handled them and what household they came from. Super Mario Galaxy 2, the original Super Mario Galaxy for $9. Mario Party 8 for 10 bucks. And Mario Kart Wii for 10 bucks. So, can't go too wrong on any of those releases, thankfully. So, I think that's almost all the stuff here. So, now let's go ahead and get to the biggest stack here the console stack. Check this out. So, this is actually from the same haul that these games came from. So, I end up kind of spacing that out a little bit. But it's funny because I've been I, I've been messing with the original Xbox quite a bit here recently, and I've been wanting to uh, get some other systems as well. So I've been kind of looking on eBay, looking on Amazon, a few other places. I really didn't want to buy any from a game shop in town, and I rarely see original Xboxes at thrift stores. And then occasionally when I would find one, it would be like at a Savers, for example, and they would price theirs at like $50, which is the same as you're going to get at a game shop. So you're really not getting a good deal on that, in my opinion. Um, you're just getting, you know, as much as it's supposed to be. So imagine my surprise when I go to one of the shops that I like to go to and I see not one, not two, but three Xboxes right there. And I had asked about it, like I looked through some of the games and stuff, I was able to get, you know, this stack of games here. And I was just shocked to see three of them all in one place, all at one time. Um, but let's go ahead and go through all these systems here. So, you know, the, the lady who I was buying from, she was really nice about it too. She was very honest, like, hey, it comes with this, it doesn't come with this, it's as is. And as you can see, they even wrote on here as is. And I actually posted about this on Twitter as well too. And somebody thought that this was Sharpie at first, and it's not, even if it's Sharpie, it can come off easily. But all the writing on all these games and stuff is done in crayon, so it's very easy to take off. Uh, it really doesn't do much to that, and it's just wax, that's it. But going through this here, end up getting here the first xbox for 12.98 as is uh, this is a i checked these out as well none of these have been modified all of them work 
I tested the disk drives, I made sure they turned on and everything, and again, they're, they haven't been open, they haven't been modified, no hard mods, no soft mods, unfortunately, but I can just do my own thing on there as well, too. And, uh, let's, well, let's go ahead and just go through these. So this was $12.98 as is, so $13. Half off brought this one to $6.50. And it wasn't technically just as is, it did come with an AV cable. So console with AV cable, for 650, I think that's a stellar deal. We got another console right here, 1298, as is. It came with, again, another AV cable. So end up getting the console with the AV cable. This one is a 1.2 Xbox, so 650 for that. And the most expensive one right here for $30, and this one was more expensive because it ended up coming with this baggie right here, which I haven't even opened this one up yet, but it does look like it comes with another AV cable, a power cable, and a controller S. So this one, I mean, you're ready to rock except for the games on here, but this one was $30. It's a 1.6 model console, which is my least favorite of all of them, but you know, drop that down. So I got a controller with cables and the console, for $15, which again, I think is quite a great deal. So I'd asked to look at the condition on one of them. And it was funny because then the lady just kind of kept giving them to me. And I was like, oh, well, I'd like to just, can I just get all of them? And she said, oh yeah, sure. She seemed a little bit surprised. It was like, oh, okay, sure. That works out. So I do have plans for these. I do have several modding videos for the original Xbox that are in the pipeline. Several of them have been done. They're all uploaded, scheduled, ready to go. And uh, what I like to do, I, I like to take these apart, clean them up, modify them, future-proof them, restore them, upgrade them, all that stuff. So they do go to a good home, thankfully. And even if I have to rehome them, I do that as well too. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I always like taking these systems or taking systems in general uh, out in the wild and cleaning them up and just breathing new life into them. It's, it's always a fun thing. And, uh, you know, each of these has a AV cable, which is great. The figure eight cable on each of them, it's easy enough to grab a hold of. And this one, I mean, one of them just comes complete with everything on that. So I already have a few ideas for these here, but I just thought it was great where it was like the stars aligned, where I've been really wanting to find an Xbox at a thrift shop for a while. And look, I found three of them. And these are all great too, because I was actually like, when we picked these up, um, my girlfriend was with me and I was telling her about it. I said, you know, I've been, I've been looking around on Amazon, eBay, as I was telling you all. And I said, you know, the problem is these things are bulky and heavy. They're one of the bigger consoles out there and they're just kind of heavy and annoying to pack up. So to ship one of these, you have to pay 15 or $20 just to ship one of these console only just to get it out the door. So the problem is, when you start looking on eBay and other places, you can find a Xbox for cheap for like five, 10, maybe $15, but that doesn't include the shipping. And sellers will almost always throw shipping on that too. So you're paying like $15, $20 just to ship the system, and then you have to pay for the console itself. Uh, or if you find other systems, like I think a few episodes ago, I showed you all one that I got off eBay for like 25 bucks. I was able to get that because they did, they, they accounted for that. They just built the shipping cost into the price of the system and I was able to get it for the lowest. But the point is on there to buy a original Xbox shipped to you, you have to pay at least 25, $30 because of that shipping. So it's nice when I'm able to get them, you know, for 650, 650, 15 bucks where I just, you know, don't, I can just bypass that shipping. So when it comes for the original Xbox, I almost always recommend to people, if you're looking to get one for a good price, try and look like on Craigslist, look at pawn shops, look at thrift shops, look at local game stores, because if you buy online, like you can do that, but you're going to be paying 15 or $20 at least for shipping. These things are expensive and annoying to ship out. And I guess the last thing I can share with you all as well too, I did not pay for this, but I think it was the first one down here when I tested it out. I noticed that it was trying to spin up the DVD drive. So I popped open the DVD drive and what do you know? I got the most fitting game in there. Halo 2. So it came with a free copy of Halo 2, thankfully. And I just kind of like smiled and laughed and then I used that for testing on all of these here. And the disk drive seems to work on all of them. Of course, because they're dirty, the disk drive, you, you hit the eject button and it jams, so you have to hit the disk drive, slam down on top of the Xbox, and then it opens up. So I actually ended up buying a pack of like 
a hundred rubber bands for or drive belts for disc drive so I can replace those because I thought I had some and I'm not sure where they're at but it's like 10 bucks for a hundred of them straight from China so I just decided to import those but yeah out of all the free games I could have gotten Halo 2 is just it's not only the most common but it's the most fitting and i believe this was it has to be the most common because this is the best selling game for the original xbox so this is not at all rare <laughs> and it's even funny too because i found when i was shopping i even found a complete in box really great looking copy of halo 2 and I almost got it and I said, no, no, I already have it. I have the limited edition. Like I have, I think two copies of the limited edition. I have at least one copy of the regular edition that's in great condition. I was like, no, I don't need another copy of Halo 2. Well, guess what? I got another copy of Halo 2, but I didn't have a choice in the matter here because it came included in the system. <laughs> so anyways, that is it here. Got the three consoles, got all these games. And I have to say, I feel like this is a pretty successful haul. <laughs> Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. But if you're going to dislike, just be sure to know that you're going to make this sleepy dog very, very sad.